Welcome everybody, Pitch Strike Chronicles podcast. I am Tats. I'm here with Donald and Rob. And the rumors are coming out that there's a, a new playoff format that's going to be coming in. Some people say it's set in stone until the ink is dry. We'll see if there are any changes made, but they are planning on doing an expanded playoff with seven playoff teams. And I think this is just absolutely crazy. I know that a lot of people want more baseball, you know, more, you know, baseball is, it's a long season, it's competitive enough. You know, it doesn't need more playoff games for more excitement. You know, the excitement comes in September where you have all the division races. So there's where you get everybody all hyped up for the playoffs. You know, the playoffs are just kind of, you know, we already have the one game wild card, you know, with the three and then the three division winners. It works. I don't know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but with the new with the new playoff uh, playoff platform, that that almost got me. <laughs> what do you, what do you guys think about it? Playoff platform, <laughs> tongue twister. Uh, it's stupid. Stop adding teams. You know, we, it, there's already too many in now, as some people would argue. I like the way it is, though, with the one-game wild card. It brings some excitement. Um, I do think they need to restructure seeding specifically yeah. so you know we don't see a, a team like a 100-win Dodger team playing in a wild card game. You know That's, that's something they need to look at, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think they need to add two more playoff teams. It kind of just – you know, you're kind of just uh, flooding it at that point. You know, it works in the NBA because everybody's playing each other. One plays eight, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And um, in baseball, the new proposal, I think you said it would have the top team gets a buy and then the, uh, the second best gets to pick their opponent. It's like, what are we doing here? You know, like the only thing that can do, the only positive I can see out of that is a team that picks their opponent loses. So it's like, ah, you thought you had an easy win coming to you, and then you got yeah. you, you got the brakes the brakes beat off you. So I don't know. Um, I don't like it. I don't want to keep adding teams. I know it adds more revenue for for some players and, and teams and all that stuff, but I don't like to continue to add teams because 2020 was just a mess in terms of how many teams are in it and teams that probably should not have been there, the Yankees included. And but even teams under 500. Now have a chance to make the playoffs. It, it, yeah. that's, that's not why you compete. You know, you have you have three divisions. Maybe I don't know if you want to do that. You have you add one more team and then you can still try the buy, but and you still have the one game play. I don't know how they do it. I just don't like adding two more teams when some people would say that having the second wild card is already too much. You know, it's just a one-game playoff. Maybe you make that a three-game series. I, I don't know. That would give teams more of an incentive to fight for the division title so that you avoid yeah. playing a three-game series. But then people would say, well, now you got to use three pitchers, and then you're going into another series against a fresh team, so it's unfair. I don't like adding two more teams, but um, I doubt it would happen this year anyway. If anything, it's going to be 2023, but I still don't like it. I do not like it. One word for you. One word for you. Money. Yeah. But it all comes down to the owners just want to make more money while spending less. It's as simple as that. You get more money for television revenue. And also, let's not forget the fact that every team basically makes the playoffs. You don't really need to invest that much in your playing team. If uh, if there's a better than average chance that you make the playoffs, if you're having a blue average season, um, just look at, uh, I mean, case in point, uh, the Yankees in the 60 game season or case in point, the, the Yankees last year, bad, the, the Yankees have been bad for two years now and Hal Steinbrenner hasn't invested at all in it. And, uh, we still made the playoffs and, uh, and he's been really happy with it. So, uh, uh, <laughs> you could not, you could never guarantee. You can never promise me that Hal Steinbrenner is not delighted with this idea. This is fantastic for him. He's going to rake in billions of dollars in revenue as the owner of the New York Yankees, and he doesn't even have to spend a portion of it 
even a portion of it. He can probably even spend less now than he did before because, hey, this team's going to make the playoffs every year. So it, it's watered down. It's not just about Alzheimer and the Yankees, but in yeah. general, football in general. The, the owners now can now rake in more money, make more TV revenue, more concessions, more all these games because their team's going to make the playoffs in some sort of crazy format. And uh, and they get to spend less while doing so. It's a win-win for the owners. It's a lose for the fans. Um, and it's a lose for the product of the game. I mean, uh, who would want to watch a watered-down format where I don't understand what's going on? I don't know. I can read that from Craig Carton's uh, uh, tweet last night. I'm like, what? So teams choose their opponents, and then there's bye weeks, and there's this and that. I mean, that sounds complicated. It sounds like a mess. It, it's very simple now. It's very, very simple, right? Win the division. If you don't win the division, then you're in the position where you have to have a one-game wild card, and you need to put your best foot forward in that one wild card game, or you're out. It's very simple, and in comparison, and even though I have an issue with the one-game wild card because – uh, I still believe that over 162 games of series, every game is every you know every game that you play is part of a series. Over the 162 games, suddenly you're part of a one-game format, which is uh, obviously completely different than what you've just experienced over the prior 162. Apart from that, my issues with that, and I think something could be amended with that. Still, it's a much better situation than that. I, I don't understand what all that nonsense is. Bye weeks and things like that. The only way you should get a bye week is like in the NFL. Do you know what I mean? If you've got the best record, you get a bye week. But it's not the NFL playoffs. Um, the seeding thing, I completely agree with you, Rob, because you shouldn't be in a situation where the Dodgers have to play the Giants. Uh, it's a loss for baseball. One of the two best teams in the and the game had to go just like that. So um, you, they need to sort something out, but that is not the answer. Uh, all that is is why we are so upset with these negotiations with baseball and with the owners in general, because all they want to do is make more money by spending less. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Like, I know we want, we had like one show where we didn't complain about what's been going on, but now we're back to complaining because they, <laughs> they met for 15 minutes yesterday. They, they had a meeting yesterday for 15 minutes and it ended. What, what are you doing? And you expect us to think that you're doing everything you can to get this done. Now they set a deadline for the 28th to get this done. So they're going to meet every day, I think, starting Monday and in hopes that they come to an agreement. It's just going to be a compromise. They're not, and this is exactly what we said. The fact that this has gone on as long as it has, they're going to come up with a compromise that they don't like, but it's just going to be like, let's just get to baseball. And they'll, it'll probably last a year or two, maybe a little bit more. And then they'll have another issue with the next labor discussion and whatever else they try to come up with next year. And it's just going to be more of a mess every single year. The same crap we've been dealing with now for three straight years is going to keep happening because these losers can't come up with an agreement. And again, stop taking sides here because they're both at fault. Yeah. Both complicit. They're not they're not negotiating good faith. I've said it for years. They are not negotiating good faith. Oh. They've had like, by the way, they've had what since before Christmas to have these meetings. And it's only now that they're thinking, oh, now we'll start having these more regular meetings prior to this self-imposed deadline on February 28th, you had all this time to do it before. You're having these little five-minute meetings. You just come in, and you go, this is our proposal, and you don't like it, okay, bye. I mean, what is that? I mean, literally, I can have a shower, jump in the car, get a Starbucks, come back, and all in 15, 20 minutes, and then we've well, already had two meetings in that time because because they can't organize anything. It's an absolute embarrassment. Man. It's like I was joking it's, around it's with Rob earlier. You know, they're spending how more can time. You Sorry, man. I just, how can you negotiate like that? That is not a negotiation. That is an absolute ridiculous prospect of just sitting down, going, "This is our, this is our idea. Do you like it? No. All right. Well, we'll see you later then." And then they come back, and they maybe come back maybe a week later and do the same thing again and then again and again. I mean, 
this deadline, all this is, and I've said it before, it's only we're only going to get traction when money is at risk of being lost on either side. That is when you're going to get traction. That is when the owners might go, okay, well, maybe we'll we'll see certain aspects of this. Or the players union go, okay, well, maybe we'll see certain aspects of that. That is the only way is when there's money at risk of being lost. Because let's say we've had all these months and they've done nothing. In fact, they've had years to actually sort out what they were going to do when it comes to this situation. And they haven't done anything. It's kind of, you know what it kind of reminds me of? When I was at university and I had a dissertation. I left it the day before it was due, before I started doing anything, even though I had a whole year prior, and it was on me. But the thing is, it's very similar to their negotiations. They've had all this time to actually plan this thing. They've done, no, 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 we'll just do it when there's some sort of deadline on February 28th when the when baseball might be about to be lost. It's, it's very similar. It's like they're not planning anything. They're not really doing anything. Uh, it's There's no way that you can take one side or the other. Because both are negotiating in bad faith. Yeah, you know, and you know, Rob and I were joking around earlier. You know, they're spending you know 50 minutes in a meeting, flying to to these meetings, and you know, it made me laugh because I'm like the the safety instructions from the flight attendant is lasting longer than the meetings. You know, so they're not gaining it. You know, you they got to just lock themselves in a room at this point. You know, they want to have, they want to meet every day and just, you know, they want to have a dead, they want to put a deadline on themselves. That's fine. But do we, do they really expect us to believe that they're still going to be able to come to an agreement? No. You know, yeah. So they, they, they have a deadline for the 29th of what month? <laughs> yeah. they, they, they're going to have to think of new, new months because this is ridiculous. They're going to have to extend the calendar. You know, and there was a, a tweet that um, MLBPA is saying that they're not going to uh, not to expect uh, expanded playoffs if they miss any regular season games, which means the players are not going to get compensated fully for a full season. So they're not going to do the expanded playoffs. So there's another argument that they're going to have. You know, yeah, let's, just pile we, more, let's just yeah. pile more onto the problems. If we miss. 10 games, the players are going to be like, well, I'm missing 10 games of pay. And that's going to become another argument. So that's the risk that they're taking. And so it goes back to what Donald just said. And something we've mentioned plenty of times before is all comes down to money. Once they start losing money and they realize that money is going to be lost and it already kind of has been not tremendously yet, but once you start missing spring training games and yeah, you're losing money. But once the players start to realize, oh, we're going to lose some some of our game salary now and the owners are like, Oh, we could have been selling tickets to these spring training games and to these regular season games. No one's buying anything because we don't know if there's going to be baseball. Now money's going to be lost. And now they're like, well, let's get this deadline going. See, this is exactly what we predicted. Yep. You know, we said this from the start. They're going to once they're not going to be in any rush to get this done until money becomes an, a real concern. And it's not there yet but it's going to be very soon because pitchers and catchers should have already reported. The players should have been arriving within the next couple of days. And then we would have our first game in like what, four days a week, whatever it is. And we'd have a two month long spring train to complain about. Instead, we're still complaining about labor discussions because it's been three months and these idiots can't get anything done. Well, that's because they waited for the last minute, like we said. You know, th they knew that December first was coming for years. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't start these negotiations behind the scenes during the during the season. You know, it's it, it really is. They they both right. got they their way. They didn't have to lock out the game. They didn't actually have to lock out the game. They no. had all this time to sort out something. But I, I'm really sure that a lot of this comes back to how the negotiations went years ago. Uh, with the shortened season. I think this has been carried forward. I just don't think that the players' union want to cede anything to the owners. Two reasons. One, they signed a off on a terrible CBA prior. So now they've got their backs up and they think that right, we're going to make things difficult for the owners this time around. I think they've got their backs up in regards to that. And I think they've got their backs up in regards to Manfred in general. I think if there was any other commissioner in of baseball, I think that there would be more uh, negotiations going on. I think that they would sit down and go, right, 
you know, this is what we want. This is how can we get to where we need to go? But because people view Man Manfred as all as the fan base does, as a slime ball, um, as a slime ball lawyer, um, who's basically been complicit in destroying the game from the inside, which he has, um, then I think that they're just thinking, right, well, let's just make life miserable for him. Why should they make things easy for their for their owners and and for him in general? So that's where we're at. It's those two things. It's those two factors, and uh, that's why I really, I really wish that if he really did care about the game, he would step aside. He you know, obviously never would because obviously yeah. it's cost himself millions and millions of dollars. But if someone really cared about the game and knew that how much damage he's been doing to such a historic game that's been going on over a century. Um, a proper commissioner would have come in and none of this would have happened. I guarantee none of this would have happened. But we're at this stage now because of Rob Manfred and because of the Players' Union. And uh, uh, Tony Clark is just as bad as Manfred. I don't know how he's got a job. He does nothing. Uh, and uh, and the way he goes about things is all wrong too. Uh, I'm not interested in having players go on Twitter crying about certain aspects of negotiations. Uh, and I'm not interested in what Tony Clark was saying two years ago. I'm not, I'm not interested in what Tony Clark is doing now. It's just, there's nothing good going on right now. So, but the reason is, as those two reasons I stated, they signed off on a bad CBA, and now they also got their backs up because of that whole nonsense during the 60-game season. Yeah. You know, like, you know to, to, get, to bring it back with the, the, this playoff format, it really does. It, it leans in favor of Manfred because he has the you know the new TV deal. I think it's TBS or TNT, one of those two. Mm-hmm. You know where it was. It was said that he promised them more playoff games. You know, in the new TV contract, so he put it. He put the cart before the horse on that one. Because you know now it's like all right, now that the game is shut down altogether because the teams are saying no. You know, we, we don't want expanded playoffs. You know, we want it, you know, it's fine the way it is. So now Manfred really put himself against the wall. Well, I think uh, I think they're gonna get they're gonna get an expanded playoff. Just won't happen this year because again, if the players miss any games, that means they're gonna knock they're not gonna make their full salary. So that's they're gonna be like, well, then why are we gonna give you what you want if we're not getting what we want? So if they had come to an agreement before the season starts that, you know, I think if they come to an agreement before the deadline, which means we won't miss any regular season games, that means um, we'll probably have an expanded playoff to some degree this year. And then the only, it could, yeah. The only way could, that would work is if they say, all right, if we're only, if, if we, if we miss 15 or less games, we'll still give you your whole salary. Yeah. You know, but anything after 15, then you you know from on day sixteen you're not getting a game check, you know what I mean? It's just going to create more arguments. <laughs> you know, it's but that's the whole problem with this whole fiasco. That was there's the problem. No, there's no end in sight because yeah. every solution brings up another problem for another side. And it goes back to where this all started in in the 2020 season because that's all players kept complaining about is we want prorated salaries and all that stuff and. We're ready to play. Tell us when and where. Okay, well, we want this day. No. And now the players are saying, oh, we're ready to negotiate. And then you, you leave in 15 minutes. So w- what is it? What are you doing? Yeah. Stop lying. We're not idiots. The fans are not stupid. We can all see through this. And that's why I understand the players don't want to agree to a bad deal again because they already done it. I get it. They're fighting for what they feel they deserve. Good for them. But when you've had three months to do something, and every single time you meet, the meetings end in less than an hour. You know, mm-hmm. like meetings should go if you're, for something as big as this, they should go on for longer than an hour, but at least give me an hour to where you can discuss some stuff. You're not giving us an hour. You're barely giving us 10 minutes. You're yeah. barely giving us a 10-minute meeting. I've mm-hmm. had longer meetings at my job about where to put stuff on a shelf. This is ridiculous. You guys are negotiating about getting a sport started where you're getting paid tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm getting paid pennies compared to that. We're all getting paid pennies and we've had longer meetings for our jobs. And these guys are having for a collective bargaining agreement. It's disgusting. It's bad for the sport and baseball is going to come out of this looking 
bad because they're going to come up with a compromise. They could have had this done so quickly. It may be, maybe give it a month. If it would have took a month and it was done by the new year, you'd be like, you know, that's not bad considering what we were expecting. And then both sides could have been like, look, we like this deal. It's a good deal. Let's get spring training going. Let's get these players signed and let's get to the next season. But no, we should be talking about um, position battles, who's going to start where, who might sign before the spring. You know, if there's like a veteran that gets picked up like last year, like we cite Dietrich and people are like, oh, maybe he'll make the roster. Maybe he won't. No, we're still not talking about that yet. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. I want to watch Garrett Cole throw a bullpen. I can't even watch that right now. That's I would kill to watch a catcher, a group of catchers running the bases or something because that tells me baseball's around the corner. But no, we, we can't even get that because all I see on the news is Rob Manfred's stupid face and Tony Clark's stupid face as the clown show of baseball. So let's look at how the negotiations went yesterday. John Heyman reported that players' union lowered the percentage of two-year players they're requesting an arbitration from 100% to 80%, right? So there was a little movement on that. But here is where it's really funny. The, they already previously seemed to get to around about $85 million in the, in the apart in terms of the bonus pool money for zero to three-year uh, players. Now it's gone up to $100 million. So, like, you, you've, you've made, uh, basically, in layman's terms, they made a little bit of progress in one in one area, and then they took it away in the other area. So they're like, okay, well, maybe lower the percentage in this. But then now instead of $85 million apart, now we want $100 million apart in terms of bonus pool money. So it's just sort of like, all right, we'll take a little step here, but we'll also take it away there. And it's like... That but is that, not, that's, that's an that's actual not, progression with negotiations. Is, is it no? Because Yes, it is. They're going 15 minutes here. These are not even negotiations. It's 15 minutes. And they're not... No, but the, the natural progress with negotiations, you know, like I'm, I'm my, my union, we're in, we're in negotiation talks with, with the, the school district. And we're like, okay, well, if we want, let's say for arguments, we want double time for when snow falls, you know, when we got to go and do the snow. Because you know, we got to go to work while everybody gets to stay home. It's like, okay... We'll give you double time, but we're gonna, you know, we want you, we want to get, give, we want to take this back, you know. So you, you know, the, you know, we want you to pay more in, in medical, or we want, you know, something, something, something has got to give, you know, or you know, you can't roll over days anymore, you know. So the dis, you know, there is a back and forth. My question is, yeah, fifteen minute intervals once a week. No, no, no. I was going to say, but those those are lasting for a couple of hours, and that's just for one one talking point. What are you doing? Yeah, how have ever taken negotiations? This was called negotiations. What they need to do is what what Manfred and Clark need to do is they need to check their ego at the door and do what's best for the fans and the future of the sport. They don't care. My point is, in negotiations, there's a there's negotiating. There's give or take. Right? Yeah. We'll take away a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But there's no negotiating. They're just presenting an offer, and if they don't like it, they go away again. That is not negotiating. And so when you, so all it does is it looks like they lose ground on certain things. So that's my point. If you're if you're taking away a certain area and then you're going away again for another week, you're not really gaining any ground. There's not any negotiating. It's like it's like negotiating in bad faith. That's what it looks like, and that's what it is. So it's not like your, your your union talks because in them there's give or take over a long course of a day. I don't understand why none of them are sitting down for an entire day, a nine to five like anybody else has a job. Over that nine to five, sort something out, go on a lunch break, fine. But over that time, negotiate, see where no, you are. Lock them in a room, like Tad said. Get them some pizza. Get them some. Freaking drinks, sit him in the room, lock the goddamn door until something's done. I've had longer negotiations of trading Pokemon cards when I was a kid than these guys are having for the CBA. It's disgusting. It's ridiculous. We're sick of it. The fans are sick of it. Get us baseball. Manfred, I'll say it again because I've said it way too many times this offseason. You suck. Clark, you suck. MLB owners, you suck. The PA, you suck. Thank you very much.
what happens in, in like for instance in politics when there's bipartisan laws that need to be passed they sit down over a long period of time many 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 hours it could go long into the night to sort something out what is happening here 15 minutes it's not even a coffee break so this is ridiculous that is my point yeah it's you know they're walking in. They're going out. Here's the next. Here's the next proposal. See you next week. <laughs> Have your people call my people, but the numbers are not. You know, they they don't know. They're not talking. I get 15 minute breaks at work. So, <laughs> there you go. 15. You get a 15 minute break, right? And it's not long. 15 yeah, minutes 15 is not minutes. a long time. Yeah, it flies by. You can sit down and be like, wow, 15 minutes is up. So when I had a 15-minute break at work yesterday, I was like, wow, Rob Manfred and Tony Clark just had a meeting. Basically, that's what <laughs> that, is that like – that's the state of affairs we're in right now. The NBA and NFL are thriving while America's pastime is dying. There you go. It, well, it's, it's no not, longer it's not America's pastime past anymore because that's the true. interest is declining year after year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's also football, football took over are, by storm. It's also declining people that are diehard baseball fans. Diehard baseball fans. Yeah. Diehard, diehard baseball fans are looking at this going, this is this is really hard to relate to. You know, the, the world has changed so much. Patience for general fans to be looking at how their sport is being run is lower now due to the way the world is right now. You know, where jobs are very much a, uh, an asset and a commodity in this market because of COVID and people dying and then vaccines and all kinds of stuff. And people's general lives have changed a lot over these last couple of years, right? Things are now up to the point where patience is limited with, with this stuff. Mm -hmm. You could maybe fly this back in 1994 like when there was original uh, cancellation, you can maybe get away with it. It wasn't good, it wasn't good at all because he canceled the, uh, an actual World Series, but you, these fans still came back. They came back in droves. But now in this current era, especially with the fact that everything is, and in the current generation, everything is fast-paced. You know, it's a, you got a short attention span, right? And also there's far more other things now going around. Like you got sports that are just far better than they were back in 1994. The NFL, NBA, all this stuff is now right at your fingertips. And it's like, do I want to invest in a sport that doesn't really want to invest in us? Yeah. You know, that's as simple as that. And now, you know, when, when you have people, millionaires screaming about money to billionaires, and there's people fighting, there's people fighting, people fighting for their lives, people fighting for their, for their jobs. In the current market, and you got these MLB guys just fighting over a, a difference between a hundred million dollars in bonus pool money. I mean, come on, it's just the optics are bad, and you're gonna lose people. You're they're losing me, and I'm a diehard fan, but I'm just starting to look at this going, this is just this is hard to relate to, really. Yeah, no, it's well, you know, when you were. When you remember as a kid, when you were, you know, becoming a fan, you know, it, it's ingrained into you. Now, if, if you're, you know, between, let's say, 8 and 12 years old, where now you're a little more focused, you know, you're not watching, you know, you're, you're getting ready to watch, you know, sports. There's no baseball. And all you hear in the news and on the sports talk, if, you know, is – how the owners and the, the players are just being petty towards each other. And I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, well, I'll just go, I'll put the, you know, the Knicks or the Nets game on, you know, yeah. and I'll just watch basketball. There's no football to watch now that the Super Bowl's over, which puts even more of a spotlight on the MLB. You know, yeah. so, you know, they're going to be so locked into the basketball season and hockey that they're not even going to realize when baseball comes back because they're already sour towards it. That's the problem. I mean, I'm not even like uh, um, talking about our prospect list that we're going to be doing soon. And, you know, even our trade proposals or our, our tradable players, I was like, 
does it even matter? Because the, you don't even have, when are we going to get this stuff? Like, I know we're going to get it. It's not, we're not going to have a, you know, a yeah. canceled season. We're going to get baseball, but it's just like, even when it starts, I'm going to be excited. Like baseball's back, but I just can't get that stuff out of my mind. You know, it's yeah. like you guys really had a chance to get the fans back on your side, both the PA and the league. If they would have come to a swift agreement and a good deal for both sides, I know that takes time. So I'm not saying it should have happened before December 1st, but if you would have had the lockout and took a month, said, let's get this done and got us to a regular season, the fans would have been like, all right, you know, it took you a month, but at least you got it done. We're, yeah. we're approaching March already. It's the middle of February. Guys, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't know how many times I can say it's disgusting, but it's disgusting. It's also really funny because they didn't really write their own momentum. You know how much headlines they gained from that fun pre-lockout? I mean, they yeah. gained headlines. Like ESPN, their ticker was full of uh, what – MLB signings and trades were going on. Like it was, but that never happened. Because you know, that brings up a good point. They always talk about the NFL, the NBA, but for that little period of a couple of days, baseball was Ro- the they, headline. They Look ruled. At this thing. Sorry, Taz. What were you going to say? I was going to say no. They ruled the headlines. But the, to to what you said in the, the in the the first part of your statement is how it was just so. All the attention was on baseball with the, the fast-paced free agency. Yeah. And now they think that they're just going to get these negotiations done. And let's be, you know, let, let's remind everybody, just because the contract is over doesn't mean spring training is going to start tomorrow. You still have to figure out where the, these players that are all free agents still need to figure out where the hell they're going. So you still have to have the rest of the free agency period. So you're still looking at another couple of weeks for players to get negotiate, you know, negotiations with the owners and contracts done, which depending on how negotiations go with the CBA can make it, make it even uglier with the free agents. You know, yeah. the owners are going to, you know, one, one side or the other is going to want to get the other back of how dirty well, they're going like- before that they gained a lot of progress from the fans and from uh, from the attention that they got from the big headlines. You know, it was a good, really good World Series. It was well played, and people were watching. It was good for like the Braves winning. That was a big. I thought the postseason this year was phenomenal. It was. I really you know, it was enjoyable. So and it was enjoyable. So they gained positive headlines, and then then you had these exciting moves that were happening really really quick right after. They were right, getting positive headlines. If you wrote that momentum, and then as Rob said, took a month of hard negotiating, you know, over a couple of days, just sitting down, and then right, this is our offer, and then you come back a few weeks later and just batter it out. Then, and then you have baseball for now. Then none of this negative attention would be happening right now. Yeah. And fact, would be going. Baseball's really changed. We had that really exciting period there with free agency. Now we were excited for this new free agency. There's a lot to be excited about. We've got a new baseball season. That's what should have happened. And they didn't ride their own momentum. And that's really scary because really good businesses know when to ride the momentum when the things are looking good. And they didn't ride that momentum, which makes me uh, very afraid, to be honest, as to what kind of business they're running. All right. Well, let's see what the weekend brings. And hopefully on Sunday show on the upper deck with Chris and Lynn, there's uh, some more positive news. And so um, that's really all we can hope for right now. And our next our next show, we'll be going over our five favorite free agents that are available for the season for 2022. And then we will be doing our top three untouchable prospects also next week. So look for, look, look for that. So just remember, like, share, comment, and subscribe. You are watching and listening to Pinstripe Chronicles on sportnarian.com slash player and on Northeast Streaming Sports on Roku. Just remember, wear your pinstripes with pride and play hard.